By late 2026, Voyager 1 will be one light day from Earth, a first for any human artifact. That means a 24-hour signal out and another day back, a two-day conversation with a 1977 spacecraft. In this video, we break down what one light day really means, how engineers kept Voyager talking, why this milestone matters for interstellar science, and what comes next on its quiet journey beyond the heliosphere in deep space. A light day is the distance light covers in 24 hours, about 25.9 billion kilometers, roughly 173 astronomical units, AU. Reaching that mark isn't poetry, it's a precise communications threshold. When Voyager 1 hits one light day, it's one way light time, OWLT, to Earth will read midnight, turning every command slash response into a two-day round trip. That's what makes late 2026 historic. We'll be watching a console clock, not guessing at grandeur. Right now, October 2025, trackers place Voyager 1 about 169 AU from Earth, with OWLT around 23 hours, 24 minutes. The scale here is hard to feel, so anchor it to time. Light needs one second to span 300, 000 km. Voyager, at 17 km s, needs about 5 hours to cross that same one second light gap. That ratio is why a probe that already left the heliosphere in 2012 still hasn't reached even a single light day yet. Space is vast, and time makes it legible. When the OWLT flips from 23, XX to midnight, we'll have a clean, auditable record, first human artifact at a light day distance, and a new operational tempo for the most distant working spacecraft. This moment also redefines how we talk about distance in space videos. Kilometers and AU can feel abstract, ours don't. A 24-hour one-way delay turns farther than any spacecraft into something you can feel. Send a command today, see the result tomorrow. It's a narrative hook your audience will instantly grasp, and it sets up everything else in the story. How we still talk to Voyager 1, what we're still learning, and why pushing this boundary matters for missions that follow. Voyager 1 communicates through a 3.7-meter high-gain antenna and a modest, power radio transmitter designed in the 1970s, heard on Earth by NASA's Deep Space Network, DSN, complexes in California, Spain, and Australia. With OWLT already well over 23 hours, operations are paced like correspondence. Engineers uplink carefully scripted command sets, then wait a day to see the response. This latency shapes fault recovery, attitude control, and science sequences. Everything must be robust, staged, and verifiable across a two-day loop. Power is the constant constraint. The spacecraft runs on radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs whose electrical output declines a bit each year. To stretch life into the 2030s, the team has been power triaging, switching off select heaters and instruments while preserving telemetry, attitude control, and a minimal science cadence. That discipline, and the DSN sensitivity, keeps a 1977 radio link viable at nearly 26 billion kilometers. The approach is methodical. Conserve watts, protect thermal margins, and prioritize functions that keep the antenna locked on Earth and the instruments sampling the interstellar environment. Recent years showcased just how resilient that link can be. In late 2023, Voyager 1 began returning unreadable telemetry after a fault in the flight data subsystem, FDS. Engineers diagnosed the issue and, in 2024, remapped code to a different memory location so the downlink could be properly packetized again. Result. All four science instruments resumed normal operations, an extraordinary software surgery executed with day-long command delays and 1970s-era hardware. In May 2025, the team pulled off another save, reviving a roll control thruster inactive since 2004 to compensate for aging in the primary attitude control system. That maneuver restored pointing margin, vital for keeping the high-gain antenna on Earth and the instruments oriented correctly buying time as the OWLT marches toward 24 hours. Each of these fixes is a masterclass in deep space maintenance. Archival schematics, conservative test paths, and crystal clear command choreography over a one-day uplink. Even with limited watts and a narrow data pipe, science continues. Voyager 1 still samples the local interstellar medium, charged particles, and magnetic fields beyond the heliosphere. 
building the first long baseline, in situ dataset of our galactic neighborhood. The One Light Day mark is a communications milestone you can feel. Instead of abstract kilometers, it's time. A 24-hour one-way delay that anyone understands. Four flight operations, that means slower intervention cycles and even greater emphasis on autonomous safing and pre-planned scripts. For the public, it's a clear first. No human-made object has ever been so far that a simple ping takes a full day to arrive. Based on today's distance growth and speed, late 2026, often framed as November 2026, is a defensible, ephemeris-driven estimate, though the exact day may shift slightly. Scientifically, the milestone underlines that interstellar research is already underway. Since crossing into interstellar space in 2012, Voyager 1 has delivered direct, on-site measurements of particle fluxes and magnetic fields in the region surrounding our heliosphere. These readings reveal how the sun's magnetic bubble interfaces with the broader galactic environment, informing models of cosmic rays, plasma waves, and the structure of the heliopos. Hitting one light, date doesn't change the physics outside, but it does highlight the continuity and uniqueness of this dataset, still gathered by the most distant operational probe. Culturally and technically, it reframes what's possible with ground systems plus patience. The DSN can still hear a 1970s transmitter from nearly 26 billion kilometers away. The flight team can still diagnose and repair faults with day-long latencies, evidenced by the restored telemetry and thruster revival. These are not stunts, they're playbooks. Future interstellar precursors can adopt the lessons. Higher efficiency power, smarter autonomy, fault-tolerant software, and robust ground support so we don't rely on miracles to keep talking at a light day or beyond. Finally, it expands our sense of time. We often measure missions in years. Voyager nudges us towards centuries and millennia. Within a few hundred years, it will enter the Oort cloud, and roughly 40,000 years from now, it will pass within about 1.6 light years of a nearby star. The transmitters will be silent long before then, but the artifact endures, a durable signal of intent from a civilization that learn to send questions into the dark and wait for answers even when those answers take two days to come back. When Voyager 1's clock clicks to a 24-hour one-way light time, we won't just log a record. We'll cross a line that turns distance into time you can feel. A 1977 spacecraft, running on dwindling watts and careful engineering, will be a full day of light away, still sending back news from beyond the sun's protective bubble. This milestone is a promise that deliberate design, patient operations, and curiosity can carry us from planetary flybys to routine interstellar sensing, and that the next generation will push far past a single light day. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more, and don't forget to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.